I haven't recorded in like months. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex. I am soon to be a third year medical student, which is wild to me. I don't know how this happened so quickly, but I have two more weeks of clerkship year and then I am on to doing like electives and research for the rest of medical school and then it's time for residency, which is also very wild to me. I wanted to in this video talk about my approach to my clerkship year schedule. Um, and this, as a disclaimer, is at a one year clerkship program. So if you go to a school where you do two years of preclinical, like in the classroom, this might not apply to you. There might be a different strategy. I can foresee a few circumstances where that might be true. So I'm gonna talk about my experience and what I would recommend, or at least what my approach was, I can share some other approaches with you so that when you're making your schedule or like trying to make your schedule for clerkship year, you have some sort of idea. So what I did in the order that I did it, and then I can get more granular with it. I go to Vanderbilt, so this is sort of how our program specifically works, but we have eight week clerkships. So I did in order starting in September, August or September, surgery, medicine, pediatrics, obstetrics and gynecology, and then psych neuro. And those were our five. In our clerkship year, we also have electives. And so they, we have a two week elective on our ob gyn rotation and a two week elective on our pediatrics rotation. I did anesthesia, on pediatrics and I did plastic surgery on my ob -GYN rotation. How I chose my clerkships, my approach was pretty relaxed and I would suggest first and foremost that frankly at our program and if you have a first, if you have a one year preclinical program, it probably doesn't matter. At least here, it really doesn't matter what order you take your clerkships in. Some people recommend like maybe you want to take some harder ones earlier in the year because your shelf score, so shelves, if your school offers them, are exams that you take at the end of each clerkship to sort of like gauge your readiness. If you feel like you're going to have a harder time passing and your score or your school does pass fail, the score that you need to pass, I'm like tripping over my words right now. The score you need to pass a shelf is lower at the beginning of the year and increases towards the end of the year because they assume that your knowledge will build on itself. And so you will need sort of like less hand holding, so to speak, to like pass the shelf exam. So that's a consideration you could make. My approach was I wanted to do the hardest ones first and sort of like ease down into summertime because I'm taking step one this summer and I wanted to be fresh for step one studying. Some people are taking step two this summer, which is new. Um, some people are taking step two before step one. I'm taking step one. And so it didn't really matter if I had any specific clerkship right before I took step one because I'm gonna have to study for that anyway. Some people, however, if you have the option to take step two and you would prefer to take step two before step one, some people tried to get their medicine rotation last so that they would be really fresh on a lot of topics when they went into studying for step two to make it easier to do that. I'm taking step one, so my approach was more like I want to ramp down and then I want to sort of start studying for step one during my last clerkship, which I'll start doing next week. Um, so that's my approach, but I will say at a, at a one year preclinical program where you do your clerkships and then you have other years where you're doing electives and stuff, it really doesn't matter the order that you take it in aside from your personal preference and what might be helpful for your studying. Um, if you're if you're out of two year preclinical program and you're like trying to figure out where you're applying to residency or what you're applying to residency in, it might be important for you to take the clerkships that you're in between that you like have interest in sort of earlier on so you can see like what you're actually interested in. Um, because it would be a shame to figure out that you're really interested in, let's say like neurosurgery at the end of your third year and have to apply into the neurosurgery residency at that time and be like, 
I haven't done research, I haven't been involved in this, I don't know anybody, like try to avoid things like that. So if you're in between things or you think you might even have like the slightest interest in a field, if you have a two year preclinical program and your clerkship year is like abutting when you're going to be applying for residency, it would be important to take the things that are gonna clarify your situation a little bit earlier. I will say some other advice that I've heard from my classmates that didn't really make a difference in my life necessarily. And I don't, I, again, I don't really think that it matters is what I want to like drive home. But some things you could consider is if you're, if you know that you're very, very interested in surgery, you could take your OB-GYN rotation before you take surgery because there's a lot of surgery in OB-GYN. You'll learn how to sort of like navigate the operating room. You'll learn how to suture. You'll learn how to be like effective, how to suction, etc. So you'll learn how to be sort of like a helpful person in the OR before you start your surgery rotation. And then when you're on surgery, you already have these skills and you're like a step ahead so you can start like assisting in more ways or at least like shine a little brighter. I will say I didn't know that I was interested in surgery uh, when I started my clerkship year. And so I did it first and I didn't have trouble like making connections or finding research mentors or anything that because I didn't know how to suture, like that didn't change my life significantly. So I don't know that that's necessary, but if you are considering that and you really do want to like thrive and shine and impress people, like that might be an approach that you take. Clerkships here at least work like, did you show up? Are you interested in learning? Like they're not expecting me to know how to like do surgery. They want me to know the anatomy and patient care and like, am I interested in learning how to suture? Not that I can do it by myself because that's not the level that I'm expected to be at. So other things is if you're interested in obstetrics and gynecology, you might do your surgery rotation before OB-GYN for that same reason that you'll know how to sort of operate in the OR and like know how to be helpful. And then you can sort of like build on top of that and impress people again. I don't think that's totally necessary, but um, I wanna walk through my schedule and talk about ways that I thought it was helpful. But I will say doing surgery first got me when I was fresh from break. So if you're somebody who like is rejuvenated from a vacation and is ready to jump right back in, doing something hard like surgery or medicine right away might be for you. If you, however, do not feel rejuvenated after a break and you wanna like ease into something, um, at least here, like Psych Neuro is a good one to start on if you can, because it's a little lighter. Just sort of up to you, things to consider when you're thinking about your schedule. I did surgery first and then I did medicine. Uh, medicine, knowing the topics on medicine was very helpful for a number of reasons. That's where I really learned to chart check, um, where I really learned how to write like good notes, how I learned like a lot of diagnostic criteria and tools that have been helpful on every clerkship. So if you really want a solid foundation going into everything, maybe I would recommend medicine first or early on. I think it was helpful for me to take it early. I didn't necessarily have a strategy when I chose my schedule, but I thought that it being early was really helpful. Um, I didn't necessarily need to take it before surgery. So I'm happy with the way my schedule turned out. After that, I took pediatrics, which I thought was a really nice transition from adult medicine to child medicine. Obviously lots of differences, but knowing how to chart check, knowing how to operate in the system, knowing how to think like a medicine doctor was really helpful when I transitioned to pediatrics because although the diagno diagnosis is different and the anatomy is sometimes different and the pathogenesis is different, the approach is very medicine. And so if you know how to do that, those two are good back to back. I think you could do pediatrics and then medicine or medicine and then pediatrics, but I liked those paired together. What I really liked was pediatrics and OB-GYN paired um, back to back because pediatrics, I learned all about the babies and the kiddos and all of the genetic disorders and stuff like that that can happen. And I sort of witnessed some births on my NICU rotation and saw like outcomes from different pregnancy complications. And then I transitioned into caring for pregnancy complications and knowing sort of like what the outcome on the baby might be, but then seeing it from the mother's side was really like, 
it was a nice like transition and I think it sort of solidified a lot of learning for me because I went from caring for NICU babies to delivering NICU babies. And so it was just like really nice to be able to sort of like understand what's happening to that baby and maybe communicate with the mom um, if she wanted to know. <laughs> um, and then finally I ended on psych neuro, which I did on purpose. I sort of did on purpose. We put preferences in, so I didn't choose all of this, but I preferred this and I got my preferred schedule. So psych neuro is the easiest one, quote unquote here, just like hours wise. And I'm ending on it for the reasons that I've already stated is like, it's easier, there's more hours to study for other things, to participate in other activities. So it worked out really nicely for me to have it last because I'm gonna start studying for step and I feel like pretty good right now. Honestly, we have two more weeks, I have one more shelf exam and then I'm done with my second year and things are going really well. I will say also, this is like a huge shout out if you're an M1 watching this and you're like, I kind of hate medical school. Like what is this pre-clerkship year? I feel like I'm just like a hamster on a wheel. It gets better. I feel like so much better at the end of this year than I did at the end of last year. The tests are like, make much more sense for what I want to do with my life. The studying makes much more sense for what I want to do with my life. So if you're feeling discouraged, but you know this is what you want to do, like, don't worry, it gets better. It's better, it's just overall better. That was pretty disjointed, but I hope that it was helpful for you in considering sort of like what schedule you might want. I will again reiterate that it truly simply does not matter at a one year preclinical program. It matters a little bit more if you have two years preclinical. For the reasons I stated before, I don't go to a two year preclinical program. So you should check in with somebody who does if you have specific questions about how you should make your schedule. Things you can look forward to this summer, hopefully, <laughs> as I get my life together. Um, I have been doing reviews of all the clerkships, so I think I still have to do ob Neuro, and Psych, so there should be three separate videos for those if I can keep my life together. Probably a few since I'll have a, some more time, a few day in the life of studying for step one and then getting ready for third year, which is gonna be really cool. A lot of electives, a lot of surgery. I'm gonna be a busy girl. So it was nice talking to you all. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.